This episode sponsored by Lake Monster Details, producing the Don's Light and Magic Legacy line of parts, offering upgrade parts and decals for accuracy, special effects, and lighting. Visit www.lakemonsterdetails.com and make it glow. Also sponsored by G-Cows, producing aftermarket replacement decals and custom quality graphics for your favorite spaceships. Visit www.gcals.company.site and add some personalization to your sci-fi models today. Model from the Ensign's Chair. This is episode two of the one fourteen hundred scale Enterprise C build, and uh, I thought it appropriate to throw on the uh, as most people refer to it, the Wrath of Khan uh, duty jacket because they still wear this uniform on Enterprise C that we see uh, in yesterday's Enterprise. So, thought I'd throw it on real quick and do my intro. Uh, this uniform isn't complete. Uh, this is one. Well, I won't go into the whole story. If you've seen my smoothie build, I think I went into the whole story about it. But uh, at any rate. Uh, I figured I'd throw this on and do my intro and uh, talk about what we are going to get into this episode. So uh, I think starting off what I'm working on is uh, the uh, secondary hall because the secondary hall is probably going to be where I have to do the most work. As far as trying to get this as close to screen accurate as possible, it's not going to be 100%. Um, there are going to be some changes that I'll talk about. Uh, some, some things that are different with this model that I'm not going to worry about working with. But uh, there's a lot of other stuff that has to be done to the secondary hall. Don't expect to have to do too much to the saucer, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done on this secondary hall for sure. So give me a minute. I'll put you on the bench. We'll get to work. All right, guys. So let's uh, get started talking about uh, what needs to be done to this secondary hall. I started with the secondary hall. I usually like to start with the saucer, but... This is going to be uh, probably the biggest task. I don't see having to do that much to the saucer, but there's a lot of work to do to this to try to uh, uh, to make it uh, as screen accurate as possible or as close to the filming models as possible. Um, now, like I said, I'm, I'm not worried about 100% because there are going to be some things on this model that weren't present on the Enterprise C filming model. Greg Jean made some changes after yesterday's Enterprise. As long as he made those changes, I said I was good with it. So this uh, phaser bank was never on any of the studio models. So that's going away. I've already mentioned that. Um, I've started working on that, filling it in, sanding a little bit, filling it in, sanding. And uh, I've also, I don't know if you can notice it now because I've kind of sanded them off quite a bit here. But uh, there were two lifeboats right here. And uh, these lifeboats should be further forward. Obviously, AMT moved them back to accommodate this phaser bank going in here. So once I get this filled in, um, this one did come also, just, just like with the uh, clear Yamaguchi model, this one did come with the extra uh, transporter emitters and the extra lifeboats. So uh, I'm going to use these lifeboats to, uh, to move these forward. So I've already sanded most of these off. Um, you can kind of still see it on this side. You see the two lifeboats here. Uh, this lifeboat should not be sitting on this panel line. It should be forward. Uh, both these lifeboats should be further forward. This one should be sitting about right here, and then this one should be sitting just forward of this panel line. So I'm going to correct that. I'm going to go ahead and sand those off and uh, move those forward. So uh, that was one thing that uh, I noticed needs to be done. The other issue I'm having is that when you look at uh, the studio model, um, there is a row of windows, and I talked about this already in the preview, but there's a row of windows that need to be above this panel line, like just between the neck, the bottom edge of the neck, and this top panel line. So I need to start putting in the row of windows. I actually started to drill some pilot holes for it here, but the problem I'm running into is I'm noticing that uh, these curves aren't correct. Uh, this line, this panel line coming in, 
comes about here and starts curving down. And uh, when you look at the studio model, and I'll put a picture up of this, but if you notice this area on the studio model, this line, these two lines actually come closer together at the front instead of this turning down and uh, trying to keep the same distance between these, these two panel lines. Uh, these two panel lines actually come closer, a little closer together at the front end here. So that, uh, you can see I'm already starting to work on filling it in. And let me say that uh, I've seen people singing the praises of the uh, Bondo uh, Blazing and Spot Putty for a while. And uh, I figured I'd give it a try on this build since I've got, I'm going to have quite a bit of, at least on the secondary hole, I'm going to have quite a bit of filling and sanding and stuff. And i got to say, this stuff's pretty good so far. Um, it goes on, it dries pretty quickly, and uh, it sands really nice. So um, I think that might be my new go-to now. Um, I've still got, you know, there'll be other times when the, the putty I've been using is appropriate, but this stuff here seems to be doing pretty good. Um, it goes on smooth and it sands real nice. And uh, I've actually done, well, I'm not going, don't want to get into this top part yet, but there's actually a panel line that I moved on here, and you can't even tell where the old panel line was. This stuff sands so nice. So, uh, but at any rate, so this panel line here needs to be uh, straightened out. So, uh, I was looking at this, and I'm like, something just doesn't look right with this. And uh, I noticed when I looked at it from the side, and I'll put a, post a picture up of this. It's a little easier to see against the black background, but uh, when you look at the picture, look at this area right here, and you can see it. You can see it right here, even against the red. Uh, this is deformed. I've got a dip in the hole right here, and uh, I do a comparison, but I've got a photo I'm going to post that shows a comparison between the two halves. And uh, yeah, that's definitely um, that's definitely deformed right there so that's going to create a problem because I'm going to have to try to compensate with these uh, because these these panel lines are going to kind of curve in a little bit um, I'm going to have to try to compensate a little bit I'm, I'm not going to try to put Bondo on this and try to get this panel line the, the contour of the hole on this side smoothed out but uh, it's not that bad to where you you'll, I think once I get it painted up in that you're not going to really notice it much especially once I straighten these panel lines out and these windows uh, so yeah, I'm not going to worry about putting a whole bunch of bond on here trying to get the contour of this uh, correct or to match this one. Um, I don't think it's going to be noticeable after I do some work on it, so we should be good there. But uh, so that that panel line and this, the reason why I noticed that was I noticed that this panel line here kind of curved up and then kind of made an arch and then came back down just a little bit. I don't know if you notice it, but it's a little wavy. It kind of comes here, and then it starts to curve up a little bit, and then it curves back down. And um, this one does it a little bit too, but not as bad. Um, this panel line right here. Uh, it's not as bad as that one, but this does need to be straightened out still, because this should not curve down. Uh, it should not curve down on the front here like this. And you see the windows kind of kind of come down. And uh, I talked about that in a previous video. That shouldn't be like that. It should be, this panel line should be straight across. And that's the way it is on the studio model too. So I need to fix that. Um, so I got a bit of work to do right off the bat uh, to try to get the secondary hole where I need it before I can even start uh, moving the windows around a little bit. Because um, remember, we're missing the row of windows to begin with anyway. So I need to add the row of windows here. And then when you start looking at the studio model between this panel line and this panel line, there should be two rows of windows, and they've only got the one here. And then between this panel line and this panel line should be two rows, which is correct. The other thing I noticed about this, though, is that uh, the Enterprise C, the, uh, the, the Starfleet emblem on the side was kind of lower on it. It kind of went right here between the, you know this panel line and this one. You'll notice... This panel line is kind of at the bottom edge of where that back section is going to go. And there's these two lifeboats, which I don't believe are present on the Enterprise C model. Um, but I'm not worried about taking those off because, again, that's, that's a change that was made by Greg Jean. They are present on the Amaguchi model. But uh, so between this panel line and this panel line, that's where the emblem was on Enterprise C. But when you look at all the, uh, the models after that, uh, it actually there was a little more space made between this this row of windows and this row, and your Starfleet emblem actually lines up with the bottom edge of these lifeboats here. So, uh, 
I think I'm going to leave it as it is because it is correct to the Enterprise C, but if I was doing the Yamaguchi uh, and I'm moving these windows anyway, I, I would make a little more space here for that Yamaguchi emblem to, to or the uh, Starfleet emblem to go right here on the Yamaguchi. Um, so I don't know why that change was made, but it is. If you look at the two different, I'll, I'll uh, try to make up a, a little comparison side by side so you can see some of these changes. But uh, uh, that's definitely one change there, but I don't need to change that on this because this is correct for the uh, Enterprise C model. That Starfleet emblem should go right here. Uh, but you'll notice that uh, on the uh, Yamaguchi and, and those models that came after, um, this panel line is it's pretty much, they, it's like he filled it in to put the Starfleet emblem here. This panel line doesn't pretty much exist. I think it comes, oh, I think it comes out a little bit and then it stops. It just stops. So, yeah, there's that. But like I said, I don't have to make that change on this one because Enterprise C, this is correct. Uh, this is where the emblem should be going. Um, a little lower on the hole than on the uh, Yamaguchi, but at any rate, um, so I, I've got some panel lines to fix. This one here, I might have to do a little work on because this is where the saucers or the uh, the hole is dipping in a little bit, and it's making this line uh, a little bit distorted. So I may have to move this up a little bit and kind of try to even it out to, to uh, make up for that dip in the hole there. So. Got a bit of work to do on this. I'm going to do some work on that, and uh, we'll come back in a little bit. I'm going to try to get this episode out before Thanksgiving and uh, get this out to you guys for, for at least a holiday. But, uh, oh, one other thing I want to notice, too, while I'm sitting here, I want to mention. Uh, at the end of my, my uh, preview video, or intro video, I had uh, posted a picture and made a comment that there were never any photon launchers placed on this model on the studio model. Well, Earl, uh, AMT has taken it upon themselves to put photon launchers on here. <laughs> so, again, uh, if I stick to my rule that if it was a modification made by Greg Jean, I was good with it, uh, I would leave it. But Greg Jean did not put these on here. These were never put on here. Um, and Rick Sternbach, who, who designed this model based on uh, the previous uh, designs made, um, even made the comment that he was surprised Greg Jean didn't pick up on the fact that he forgot to put photon launchers on here. But AMT has placed them on this model. Now it's up to you how you want to look at that. Uh, Greg Jean probably should have caught that and put photon launchers on there. But he did. And they weren't on any of the studio models. So, in my case, on this build anyway, I'm taking these off. Now I got my clear Yamaguchi model. If I build that at some point, I might leave them on at that point. But uh, for this build, I'm, I'm just going to sand these flat, and uh, I'm not going to have these photon launchers on here. So it's up to you how you want to go about that, though. You can leave them on there, light them up, whatever you want to do. Um, they probably would like, look pretty nice if uh, you put some LEDs or SMDs behind it with uh, some fiber optic or that and lit both of these up. They'd probably look pretty nice, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to stick to my rule. Like I said, uh, I'm going to stick to my rule that uh, if Greg Jean didn't make the change, I'm not going to leave it on this model. So, anyway, there's that. And uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to get to work on this and we'll come back and take a look. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So, uh, <laughs> I haven't really done anything yet. I uh, Don't say I didn't warn you. I've said before that uh, sometimes uh, trying to make these things as close to the studio model as possible uh, you're going down a rabbit hole. You don't know how deep it's going to go until you start going down it. And uh, what happened was I started putting together my uh, my comparison foot shots to show you that uh, the insignia had moved and uh, realized while doing my setup that uh, it, the insignia actually didn't move. And uh, I'm going to correct that real quick. Let me show you this picture. Let me bring it up on my monitor here so I can uh, look at it real quick with you. But uh, so when you're looking at this picture, uh, the, the, the gold box I put up there is around the same grouping of windows on each model. And you can tell that because they're pretty uh, unique in that you've got two, top, starting at that top left corner, you've got a group of two windows, two windows, two windows, and then looks like one. And then at the bottom there, it's two windows, two windows, two windows, two windows. So you can see that that's the same grouping. So the, the uh, insignia is in the same place in both those shots. The only difference is 
on the uh, Yamaguchi model, which is the bottom photo, it's moved forward some because you can see on the Enterprise C on the top, you can see where the, the front edge of that uh, insignia is compared to uh, the bottom where it's obviously further forward. So I had to sit there a minute and look. I'm like, okay, well, what's, uh, what am I missing? Because the panel lines are different. And I realized that uh, they changed the panel lines on this from the Enterprise C to the uh, Yamaguchi and the Dukov, I think is what it was called. But uh, they changed the panel lines after the, yesterday's Enterprise. These, these are all different. And uh, the next photo I'll show you, you can see that. Um, let's see. Bring this one up for you. This is uh, kind of a back end of it over top of the, the pylon. So you can see those two, the, the, again, the gold squares I got are, are outlined in the same grouping of windows. And you can see on Enterprise, see that top picture, you've got that first set of three individual windows. You got a second set of windows below that, and then you have your panel line. Well, on the Yamaguchi, which is the bottom photo, you've got the three individual windows, and then the panel line's right under those. So, for the Enterprise C, um, again looking at this, at the uh, the model here, the AMT model, they've gone based on the Yamaguchi panel line, and of course they've left out that uh, group of windows up there. So um, <laughs> I left, left with a little bit of a dilemma there. I think, and here's the thing, I, and I'll, I'll post a link. There's some high-res photos of the uh, studio model when it was on auction at uh, the prop store. And uh, let me bring up this other image to show you the front. I had to actually pull a screen cap of the Enterprise C because I couldn't find a good shot of it from the uh, archive. But uh, that top photo, I know it's hard, probably hard to see on your screen, but... Uh, that top group of windows inside that gold square or rectangle I put up there, that top group of windows and that bottom group of windows, your panel line runs right in between that top and bottom group of windows right there. Um, you can just make it out in the screen cap that I pulled off right there. And you'll notice that same group of the windows on the bottom photo, the, the uh, arrows are actually pointing to where the uh, panel lines are running. So they definitely changed the panel lines from uh, yesterday's Enterprise to everything after that. Now again, because it's a change Greg Jean made, we could look at this and say, well, uh, because Greg Jean made it, that's you know the way the panel lines should be. The issue I'm running into is um, the windows for the Enterprise C to do them the way they were on Enterprise C don't quite. And let me pull up my picture here again. Uh, they don't quite match up to the panel lines. And that's the problem I'm running into. Um, if I'm trying to, if I'm adding that row windows, and I'm trying to make this look more like the studio model for the Enterprise C, um, the panel lines won't quite line up right. So the good thing is, is that when you look at the high res photos on the prop store, and again, I'll put the link for that in the notes below, and you can make a judgment for yourself. The panel lines aren't etched in; they're uh, they're painted on. So. These etched lines you really don't need, and really they're not screen accurate. You don't need these etched panel lines. You can, and what I'm going to do is fill these in and do your own painted on panel lines because that's the way they were on the studio model. They were just painted on, um, especially up top here. And uh, you can see where I fixed I fixed the, uh, the one panel line, straightened it out. But it's kind of a moot point because I think I'm, I'm going to fill in all these panel lines and just paint on. Uh, paint all of my panel lines because they're not etched in on the studio model at least from what I could tell to me it doesn't look like they're etched on it looks like they're just painted on you can see what I've done here with this top part and this is why I'm oversizing these basically I'm going to oversize drill these windows out and uh, what I do is I come back and I put my uh, my window mask if I can get this without dropping them my little window mask I made here I come back and I put those and that lets me, you know, oversizing these lets me kind of maneuver them around just a little bit, gives me a little wiggle room to kind of get these all lined up like I did up here. And uh, then I come back with my black uh, primer coat and uh, I'll talk more about the paints later that I'm going to use. 
But I come back with my black primer coat over these uh, after I put these in place, and that gives me my light blocking. And then I come back over with my base coat, which, uh, well, I'll go ahead and talk about what I'm using for my paints is I'm using the craft paints again because I really like using the craft paints. And uh, again, this is another one of the things that Boyd turned me on to over at Trekworks. But I like the craft paints because they're easy to work with. Uh, they come off pretty easily if you make a mistake. Uh, just, just water, just warm water, really. You can just uh, wipe them off. But um, they, they, they do real well. So I've been using these. I used them on my, uh, my original Inter Enterprise model. Actually, no, I take that back. On that one, I used the uh, Tamiya paints. But I've used this a couple times in a couple different spots. And they work real well, so I'm gonna. This is gonna be actually the first model I'm gonna do the whole model with uh, craft paints, and you can get these at Michaels, uh, Michaels, or I think I got all three of these at Hobby Lobby. But uh, you can get them at either store. Uh, personally, I like Hobby Lobby better because uh, they do a better job of stocking their shelves. Anyway, my local Hobby Lobby anyway does a better job of stocking their shelves than my local Michaels or. Um, you can even get some of these at Walmart, but uh, I don't think the Craftsmart. I think you can get some of these folk art at uh, Walmart. But uh, anyway, I like getting these from Hobby Lobby because they do a better job, at least locally, of stocking them and putting them in kind of an order as far as grays, blues, reds, all that. So what I'm using for my base coat is uh, it calls for a light gray, and this is a fog gray. And uh, that's what I'm going to be using as my base, and you can kind of see... You know, of course, I don't know how the camera's going to pick it up, but you can kind of see that uh, it's, it's kind of a light, very light gray. And uh, for my light blue color, I'm using uh, Sky Mist, Folk Art, Sky Mist. And these are all acrylic paints. But uh, I'm using that for my light blue, and I'm using the Folk Art Blue Bell for my uh, darker blue. And uh, I kind of did a little test swatch here. And you can see the difference between the darker and the lighter blue. Because the, the funny thing is when you look at it by itself, that blue doesn't really look that dark. But when you put it next to a lighter blue, it looks darker, which kind of answers my question as to why the paints look like they vary so much in tone on the pictures of the studio model. When you're looking at this dark blue and it's not up against a lighter blue, it, it looks like a lighter blue. But once you put it up against this light blue, you can definitely tell the contrast. So... Those are the colors I'm going to go with. Um, I think they'll look pretty good. And uh, But anyway, yeah, so I'm going to have to strip this off anyway because I'm going to fill these panel lines in because I don't like them. I just don't like the way that it accentuates that narrow pan. You don't see that on the studio model. So I'm going to fill these in, these panel lines in, and come back and redo this as well as filling all the panel lines on this. And uh, basically the way I do that, as you can see, an example here, I know a lot of people do this, but if you're new to modeling, um, basically I take some masking tape and I mask off the area that I want to fill in. And uh, what that lets you do is once this dries some, you can pull this masking tape off. And it just gives you a nice clean line over the area that you want to fill in and sand instead of having you know, too much of an overrun of the, uh, the putty. So uh, that's the way I'm going to do these panel lines as well. I'll do each one of these individually to kind of, I'll kind of try to save these windows because uh, eh, it don't really matter. I'm going to probably end up filling these windows in anyway and just redoing this whole thing uh, because uh, going by the studio model, I'm going to try to line these windows up properly and then I'll come back with my panel lines and uh, do that. So. A lot more work to do on this than I was planning, but like I said, that's uh, it's kind of what you get into when you try to do these things based on the studio models and not just build them as they are. So, uh, some food for thought there, uh, some things to consider, you know, whether or not you want to go this deep into doing this model or whether you want to just stick with uh, just, you know, doing the basic windows and, and leaving it the way the model is. So, at any rate, I'm going to work on that. And uh, once I get some of that done, some progress done on that, we'll come back and we'll take a look at it and see where I'm at. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So here's the, uh, here's the madness I've gotten myself into. I've uh, puttied up all the, uh, the panel lines that they have etched into this thing. And uh, next step is going to be to do a lot of sanding, um, get these panel lines sanded down to where they're smooth with the hull, and uh, do a little, little test painting with... Uh, some primer to see where I need to uh, do some more touch up at 
And once I get these sanded smooth with the hole, then I'll start working on uh, my light blocking, putting my my uh, window uh, masks on that I showed before that I made here. And uh, put those on and I'll come back and uh, we'll talk about a little more about how I'm going to do this as far as the painting and all that. But uh, it's going to take a little bit. i got to let this dry for a while and... Uh, I'll work on sanding this, but uh, I'm looking to get this episode out. Hopefully on Thanksgiving Day I can get this thing kicked out to everybody. But uh, I'll keep on working on it, and uh, once I get to uh, a good point, I'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so here's, <laughs> here's my uh, progress, or lack of. Um, I decided that uh, it was easier, since I'm going to be moving these windows around a little bit, it was easy to just go ahead and fill all the windows in along with the panel lines. And uh, so that's all filled in, sanded it smooth. And uh, I actually decided I'm going to try to fix that dip a little bit. I've got a little, made a little progress on it. It's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but uh, it's definitely better than it was. So uh, I'll get this sanded. It's got to dry overnight. And uh, I'll get this sanded, and I may do another another coat on there just to, another layer of uh, Bondo on there just to get it a little more rounded where it needs to be but uh, definitely better than what, what it was so working on getting that improved I filled in all these windows I'd already drilled because I realized they are not where they're going to need to be um, so I had to redo that the reason being I went back and I started uh, looking at some more photos. I did the same thing with this side. I got this all. Fortunately, I haven't done any drilling on this side yet. So uh, this is starting pretty much from scratch. I went in and filled everything in, got it sanded smooth. And uh, what I did was I started looking at some more pictures. And I noticed that when I was looking at some of the screen caps from uh, yesterday's Enterprise, you actually can see just a little bit of a uh, panel line. It, I don't even want to say it's etched in, but it, there was a depression where these panel lines are. But it's definitely not etched like it is uh, the way the model comes. It's 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 really sub subtle, and uh, I'm not too worried about recreating that. I, I think I'm just going to paint these on. Um, I think that's mainly what it was done, uh, how it was done, as far as what you see. Uh, you don't really see that indention. Um, unless you know the lights hitting in a certain way there's only one screenshot I found where you actually notice that and uh, I'll put it up so you can see it real quick but uh, it, it's not very noticeable it's just the way it just happens to be the way the light is hitting it you can see just a little bit of an indention on these uh, vertical lines um, incidentally when I was looking at where to place my my lines at it doesn't look like any of the vertical uh, panel lines changed it looks like they all stayed in the same place, but, and, and actually most of the bottom ones looks like they stayed mostly the same place. Um, but this one up here uh, is way off. This is the, these are the main two they changed. Well, this one actually stays the same. This one here is the main one that they changed um, when Greg Jean did the uh, revisions, uh, the changes that he did to the model. Uh, this line here got moved up further and uh, a second line got actually got added down here, I think. I'm not looking at the picture right off the top of my head, but uh, there was a second line, and then you had the insignia. But I think on the original, the original Enterprise C, uh, you had the line up here. Then you had this line came in below the second set of windows. So what I'm actually going to do, let me grab my pointer here. What my plan is, and this isn't the final placement of, these, of uh, this tape either. This is just kind of give me an idea. Uh, where the windows need to be but uh, I need to have two sets of windows two rows of windows in this first between these first two panel lines so I'm gonna add a set of windows up here and you can see where the old panel line was I'm kinda ha I'm gonna have to go through that with the windows now unlike the studio model once you get to this back part the windows kinda start to trail up across the panel line I'm not gonna do that um, <laughs> I know I'm kinda breaking my rule there if Greg Jean didn't make the change then I wouldn't make the change, but I just don't like the way it looks on the studio model, so I'm not, I know I'm not going to like the way it looks on my model. And that's uh, one of the things, you know, we talk about that you've kind of got to figure out what you want to do um, in terms of when you're trying to copy the studio model, you know, there's some things you may not like about it. 
Um, and, and that's one of the things I just don't think looks right. I don't like the way that the windows come up and then kind of cross over the panel line. I kind of want to keep them in line with the panel line, and now that I've straightened these lines out, I think that'll be okay. I think that'll look fine um, with these lines straightened out, and you can see where this one here curved down a little bit. I'm going to straighten that out right here. And uh, same thing on the bottom here. This line here kind of curved up a little bit, and I've kind of straightened it out a little bit. So um, I kind of like the way this is looking better. What I'm going to do now is the reason why I put these the, the tape on here. I'm going to come back with my black primer, and I'm not going to drill the windows yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with my black primer, and uh, actually what I'll probably do is use gray uh, because what I need to do is be able to mark. I want to take a, a sharpie and be able to mark, kind of put a dot where I want these windows at, and then come back with my drill, my trusty drill here, Dremel drill, and uh, drill those windows out. But I kind of want to have an idea of where they're going to be placed. I don't want to just start drilling them like I did on this side. Like I did on this side. I don't want to just start drilling and then find out, oh, okay, that, that doesn't look right. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to paint this, put a little gray primer on here, peel the tape off. That'll leave me these panel lines in place. That way, looking at the uh, photo of the studio album, I can kind of come in and figure out uh, where I want to place these windows at in terms of where the panel lines are. But... Uh, this panel line up here, I kind of had to do some guesswork. There's no really clear images of uh, this area on the Enterprise C model, um, at least none of the ones I found. Most of the Enterprise C model photos are uh, very low quality photos, very grainy, or they don't get this area up here very well. But my belief is this panel line exists on the Yamaguchi model, and I think this is where this panel line originally ran. Instead of this on this panel, the way the panel line was run right here, it should have run up here. Even on the Yamaguchi, it runs up here. So I'm pretty sure that's correct, um, and that's the way I'm doing it. And then your second panel line came down and sat a little bit above um, your pylon, where your pylon comes out from the side of the saucer here, or the side of the secondary hull. So. I'm going to go put a coat of paint on and uh, see if I can't start marking my windows and then we'll come back and see how it looks. Alright guys, so I've got the, uh, you can see where I've marked the lines at. Where I pulled that tape off, you can see the gray panels is basically what I'm working with. I'm trying to work inside those gray panels so that way when I put the tape back down, I'm not painting over a window or that. Um, or the window's not, or sitting on the panel line instead of inside the panel lines like it's supposed to be. So, what I gotta do now is come in here and uh, what I did was I looked at it and I've smudged some of this because this marker is not drying on this paint. But uh, that's all right. I don't, I don't need the, the um, lines to stay there very long. I just gotta come in with my Dremel now and start drilling out the windows. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna start working on is uh, coming in and drilling out some of these windows. But uh, let's do one or two here real quick. All right, guys, so uh, I got all the windows drilled out, and I went ahead and filled them in with my UV resin, so they're all filled in. Uh, I came back and sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper to get it all nice and flush, and then came back over it with an 800 grit sandpaper, and that's good enough for where I need it. Uh, the craft paints do a real good job of filling in any, any micro uh, scratches that might be on here. So uh, I'm also going to be using the uh, prime in this with the uh, all clad primer and micro filler, the black primer and micro filler, and uh, it's a lacquer, so it'll do a real good job of uh, filling in any small little issues that we may have, and uh, also what it does is that lacquer makes it for a hard primer coat, and that way, uh, once I get done priming, what we'll do is we'll prime this, uh, probably start next episode, I'll work on, uh, I gotta work on finishing this other half and getting that ready. And uh, now I'll get my window masks on. I'll do that primer coat, uh, that lacquer primer coat. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll put, uh, I'll, uh, I'll only mask off the windows I want light through. Then we'll do the primer coat. And then I'll come back and I'll, I'll put masks where I want the rest of the windows to be. Uh, the ones that are going to be showing, well, uh, like to run lit. So that way that primer coat kind of creates that effect of uh, unlit windows. And uh, we'll come back and we'll do the... Uh, 
our base coat and all that. So well, I'll go into that more next episode. Uh, we'll just consider this episode a uh, prepping the secondary hall episode because this episode is getting kind of long already. So we'll come back next episode and hopefully be getting into this and uh, starting to get some paint down and seeing how this is going to turn out. And uh, we'll go from there, see how it goes. But uh, at any rate, I do want to say that uh, I did get the decals uh, from Gus over at GCALS. And uh, he sent me two sets in case I screw up. <laughs> That's not why he sent them. He sent them because he was having some printer issues, I think. And he just wanted it sent. But they both look perfect to me. So uh, really looking forward to getting to use these. And uh, he's got all the lights. He's got a ton of lifeboats on here, more than you'll ever need. Uh, the sensor bands and everything so these are going to be great i can't wait to be able to use those and uh thank you to gus again over there gcals for his support Cass over at uh, lake monster details is also working on those uh, bussard and um, the chiller grills uh getting those out to me so wasn't too big of a hurry uh, for those it's going to be a little bit before i need them but uh, he's working on getting those out as soon as he can. I know he's got a lot going on over there, and uh, he's got more pressing orders to deal with. So, like I said, I don't really need them that quick. Uh, so, as soon as he gets them to me, though, I will show those to you and uh, let you guys see them. But, uh, at any rate, thank you again to everybody that's been watching these videos. And uh, thank you to everybody for their support and their feedback. Uh, again, if you guys are watching these videos or if this is your first time watching one of these videos, please uh, hit that subscribe button down below. kind of helps support me. And uh, if you want to get the notifications every time I put out one of these videos, make sure you click that bell icon as well. But uh, you don't have to subscribe. If you don't, please hit that like button if you find anything on these videos useful. And feel free to leave me a comment. I can also be reached. Uh, I've got uh, an email address, which is uh, instanceshare at gmail.com. The link is in the notes below. And uh, anyway, guys, I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. And we'll see you here hopefully in a couple of days. I'll have another video ready to go out since I've got a couple of days off to work on this. But at uh, any rate, guys, enjoy your holiday. Keep modeling. Sponsored by Lake Monster Details, producing the Don's Light and Magic Legacy line of parts, offering upgrade parts and decals for accuracy, special effects, and lighting. Visit www.lakemonsterdetails.com and make it glow. This episode sponsored by Lake Monster Details, producing the Don's Light and Magic Legacy line of parts, offering upgrade parts and decals for accuracy, special effects, and lighting. Visit www.lakemonsterdetails.com and make it glow. Also sponsored by GCALS, producing aftermarket replacement decals and custom quality graphics for your favorite spaceships. Visit www.gcals.company.site and add some personalization to your sci-fi models today.